You know, I gotta admit something. This probably looks a little strange. <laughs> this porch that I tend to record video on goes through a lot of changes throughout the seasons. Through the years, it's been different, and sometimes when you see a different video, you see something from a different porch even. Sometimes from a different point of view. Sometimes, depending upon where the camera is set up, you know, you might see me at a table or standing up or, you know, kind of like rapping or japping or doing whatever it may be that I feel like that day. But, you know, I'll admit something to you personally between you and I. Sometimes it looks a little weird, <laughs> you know, kind of strange, you know, kind of like, I don't know about that. And, you know, sometimes we all run into those kind of images or perspectives that we kind of look at and go, I don't know, it seems like kind of a funny way to do things. I personally thought reading the Bible, looking at some donkey talking, I thought, you know, that's kind of an interesting way for God to warn somebody, you know, speak through a donkey. I thought, <laughs> Man, that sure fits for today, because there's a lot of donkeys running around talking. <laughs> okay, well, maybe we're just going a little too far with that one. But things don't always appear to be what they are. When you come to my porch, you know, and actually was able to look a little closer rather than just on camera, you know, you might notice that, hey, that's what those are. They're tomato plants. He's growing tomatoes. And believe it or not, come later when we record some other ones, you'll see a forest of tomatoes. It may become a vining nightmare of a jungle of tomatoes because, quite frankly, I like tomatoes, <laughs> you know, so I want to grow them. But, you know, today when I woke up, you know, I checked the weather report. As a matter of fact, I checked the weather report yesterday and the day before, and I was looking at the weather map because on this porch, that looks a little weird, you know, kind of like this back here. What in the world is he doing back there? Well, let's see. Down there, I got more tomato plants. And I even got some bean plants and some green peas and some snap peas. And quite frankly, I got a long porch. <laughs> and the porch faces the east. It's got like kind of a morning sun routine. Oh, there's some bushes there, you know. And kind of open that way and down there it's got a little bit of protection you know but still kind of open so there's a lot of open spaces for the wind to come in and that's my point you know I was looking at the weather report you know and the weather report was telling me hey you know what it's going to get really windy there could be some gusts like up to 35 miles an hour maybe even higher well where I live when you get gusts like that it whips around things it goes in and out and in and out, you know. Okay, forget the dancing. It goes in and out and kind of gets into things in places where you might not want it to be. And so, because I'm still growing my plants, they're not fully grown, they're a little susceptible to the wind. Matter of fact, a bunch of them can't handle it when there's high wind. So, I have to put up like a tarp, you know, kind of stretch it out and protect some of the plants, you know, and kind of stake them a little bit better, you know, so that they'll be able to resist the wind. Even though the wind can add some strength to normal plant life, the depth of my plants is pretty shallow because I'm kind of growing them, you know, like up off the ground. I built these little boxes, you know, and then put dirt in it and kind of put plants in it. <laughs> I'm growing tomatoes. But, you know, I have to keep checking the weather report to make sure that it doesn't bring in wind because if it does, I have to protect them. I have to never mind what it looks like. Because you see, I'm looking outside right now. I can see the sunrise. Matter of fact, it looks gorgeous. It's like, wow, this is going to be a great day. But the weatherman told me something interesting. He says, you know, the sun's going to come up. I said, well, that's good. Okay. And it's going to look great. And I said, well, okay, that's good. And it's going to be bright, sunny day. And I went, okay, that's good. But by late afternoon, the winds are going to start. Ooh, that's so good. And it's going to get kind of cloudy. Oh, okay. Then in the middle of the night, you're going to get some really stomping winds. As a matter of fact, for the next couple of days, you're going to get some high winds. Between you and I, 
I don't know. You know, I look over there and I say, you know, the sun's shiny today. It's kind of bright. Maybe he was right about that part, but you think he was right about the rest? I don't know. But you see, I've had some experience with the weathermen in my area. Most of the time. And I watch their little weather satellite things, you know, and I see their, you know, little time lapse stuff. As a matter of fact, 85%, maybe 90% of the time, they're right. And so I kind of take their warnings a little serious. And somebody's going, so what's this got to do with me? <laughs> I'm in snow. Well, good luck. <laughs> Supper, sucker. <laughs> Been there, done that. I'm from Alaska. <laughs> That's a piece of cake. Snow ain't nothing. You ought to try the, you know, 60 mile an hour winds, 40 below. Mmm, that's fun. You know, who cares about the snow? It's the wind that kills you. But the point being is this. The weatherman's warning me that there's wind, so I'm getting ready. I'm protecting it. I'm kind of getting my plants all set up. And whether they need it or not, these plants will be ready for the wind. They'll be protected, because if the wind comes, it's not going to destroy them. Jesus did the same thing. He gave us warnings about the end times. He gave us statements that were said we could look at and determine what nation or what generation would see these things begin to come to pass and that we would know the time was at hand. We would know that we were living in the last days, maybe not the last moments, but the last days. And as these things kept getting worse, you know, cloud cover coming in, winds beginning to pick up, a little breeze, you go, oh, uh -oh maybe I better hurry up and fix it and get ready. Jesus wanted us to be ready. He told us to watch for these signs. He gave us an ability to think with our head, rationalize with our heart, and to pray with our mouth to ask God for wisdom. You see, God doesn't want us just going off on a tangent because you know any Tom, Dick, or Harry could come along and say, hey, you know what? It's sunny out, but I believe it's going to rain. Well, I'm glad you believe it. It doesn't mean I do. <laughs> Good luck. But, um, Someone else might come along and say, nope, it ain't going to rain, it's going to hail. And I go, well, you know, <laughs> good luck with that one. Let me know how it works out for you. Someone else come along and tell me, hey, you know what? It's going to get down below 40 degrees. It's going to be minus 40. And I'm going to look out there and go, <laughs> okay, and walk away. Because, you see, there's some things that I can determine for myself no, nah, I don't think so. Because I read the Bible. I ask God things. You know, I talk to God. I rationalize with Him. I actually have debates sometimes because I say, you know, God, I don't like this. You know, what's going on here? I don't think this is such a good deal. You know, here I go plant all these plants, you know, and then you tell me to, to protect them. You know, I'd rather you just took care of them, you know. God says, no, you take care of them. Okay, fine, you know. And I learned from my experience with God when to listen and obey and when I could maybe get away with kind of like, you know, shuffling it off, you know. We all do that. Come on, be real. Let's get real. You and I. You know, as well as I do, that you can shuffle off some things and kind of get away with it, sort of. You kind of like go, you know, maybe I'll skip church this week. Well, you know, you can. It ain't going to kill you. <laughs> Might miss a warning or two, but, you know, it ain't going to kill you. So, you know, you kind of shuffle it off and, you know, you kind of watch a football game or do something else, you know, and you go, well, you know, it's kind of like I enjoyed that, you know, and you kind of get into that, you know, and you kind of like, you know, I think maybe next week I'll shuffle it off, you know. And so you kind of get in the habit of shuffling, you know, and scuffling, you know, and just ignoring the warning. You know, was there a warning out there? You know, maybe Jesus is coming back when I don't know, but... You know, that was like maybe someday in the pie and sky. I don't know about you, but uh, <laughs> I'm getting my plants ready. <laughs> They're going to be ready for the wind because the wind's going to hit. It's going to hit soon. And I know for a fact that today is going to be the day the winds start. Now it's going to go on for, you know, maybe two or three days. And it doesn't have to continue the three days to be, you know, accurate for the weatherman. It could be a day, you know because it only takes one puff of wind to knock over that plant and kill it. You only get one chance, you know, with the end of the world. 
you know, there are things like the rapture and, you know, whether you're going to go in it or not, and you can debate those things and argue. You can learn that maybe not everybody's going in the rapture, and maybe there is a rapture, and maybe some people are going to have to go into, you know, the Great Tribulation. And some people are planning for it, some people argue they are in it, or going to it, or going to get there. You know, those are all nice debates. But you see, that's kind of like paying attention to the weather, you know? Sometimes, you know, some people will carry umbrellas when they don't need to. Okay, hey, but they're ready. You see, being ready doesn't mean you have to go wacko or weirdo. You can be normal, more or less, about the way you prepare for the end of the world without being a prepper or a stepper or an escapist or an alarmist. You can be someone who says, you know, there is something to this end of the world thing that people have been talking about. Oh yeah, they all jumped on that doomsday, you know, that it wasn't going to happen on Mayan calendar, because, you know, it was kind of like on a rock, you know, it was a rock that didn't roll. <laughs> but, and there's other, other people, you know, like camping and stuff, you know, that came along and said, I got it numbered. This is the day. Well, it wasn't, or the hour. But you know, the times and seasons, we're not, you know, like really needing to be confused about it. Things are getting worse, whether you admit it or not. Whether you look up and wake up and look at the sun and say, hey, today's a beautiful day, so I think, you know, the rest of the world's going to be fine today. It could change very quickly. And times, they are changing, and that's probably what you need to pay attention to. Not so much the alarmist or the escapist, or the wackiest, or the craziest, or the most bizarre thing you've ever heard, because now that sounds like God, because it got my attention. What you need to do is seriously study. I mean, you know, you just sit down and you kind of go, like I did with the weather. You go, you know, I need to take a look at this again. God, you and I, how about we sit down and have a talk? How about you show me what you want me to do knowing these times we live in. I don't know if we're in last days or not. Now, me personally, I do, because, you know, I know Israel's nation and that, you know, the generation sees these things come to pass, you know, and you can argue about whether or not it's 40 years, 120 years, you know, 70 years, 80 years, whatever. Those are all kind of fun things to, you know, like debate and argue, and, you know, quite frankly, I do have a pretty strong background in eschatology. <laughs> What's eschatology? Oh, it's study of end times. You don't need to worry about it. It's kind of like being a weatherman, you know. I don't just go by the sunshine, you know, waking up and go, hey, it's a sunny day. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I think I'll go to the beach. <laughs> Good luck with that one. <laughs> or I think I'll go over the mountain pass that I saw the sun come over, because if I head east from here, I go over Tahoe, and you know what? It could be snowing up there soon. But the point being is that if you want to be prepared, you prepare. You mean it's that simple? Yeah, you know, prepare, you get prepared. Jesus said, be prepared. So you prepare. What's that mean? Well, you kind of study, you know? You get some stuff together. You know, you kind of look at the Word and you say, I don't think I'm going to invest in 40 years from now, you know? 30 or 20 or 10? You know, you got to play with that one. You know? Could it be 10 years? I'm pretty convinced. You know, you got less than 10 years, you know, get your act together, buddy, because it's all over soon. But the point being is my studies don't help your studies at all. Hey, a little bit, you know, it might inspire you, you know, to take a second look. You know, but really, heck, I don't know what God has in store for you. You could walk out your door today, get smacked by a meteorite. <laughs> yeah, right, dream on. <laughs> that sounds like one of those wackos, you know, running around. Oh, no, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. And bam, the guy that says the sky is falling gets hit by a meteor. Or better yet, a piece of a jet falling out of the sky or a satellite. Remember how we used to freak out about that? You know, pieces of satellite falling out of the sky. Oh no, the Russian satellite's burning up, you know, and it's got like a nuclear device in it. It's going to terrorize us. Or better yet, the fallout from the tsunami in Japan is coming all the way over the world. And it's going to drop little tiny flakes of indescribable terror, you know, into the cow's milk. So that we're drinking radioactive milk. Everybody needs milk, but now we're going to be glowing rather than knowing that that's bull. 
baloney. You know, that, that didn't happen, did it? But some people like to get carried away, you know, and get caught up into all these little kind of crazy ideas, you know, that you can find on the internet, rather than sit down and talk to God about them. You see, that's kind of why we are told to be prepared, because we can take the time to get ready. I myself, today, am spending the time to, you know, kind of like take my stick, you know, and tie a little piece of string to it, you know, and get the plant ready. It's not ready for the rapture. It's ready to endure the wind. Because before this plant grows up, it's going to go through some windy days, some sunny days, some rainy days, and some cold days. And before I even started planting this, I sat down and thought about, you know, Lord, if I'm going to grow plants, you know, like tomatoes, and I want to get to eat them, before I get to eat them, I got to, you know, kind of like water them and take care of them. You know, I got to be able to handle the cold and the heat and the wind and the rain and, you know, make sure they get enough of everything they need, especially when the bugs come, because they're coming. <laughs> Whew, last year was a nasty bug infestation. You know, like, man, every time the wind blew, it seemed like I got bugs everywhere. Or maybe it was every time the guy downstairs sprayed, you know, bug spray, I got bugs up here, because I'm on the second story. But the point is, when I sat down and said, you know, I'm going to grow a bunch this year, I planned it. You know, I got things ready. You know, I, I kind of got all my stuff back in this little plastic sheeted area, you know, so that I could move them in there if I have to. Or that I also, you know, kind of took the time to maybe, you know, have some string stuff so that I could string them up, you know, and, and attach it to them or, you know, make it sturdy so that the plants could be protected. And they could wobble to, you know, kind of get their root strength up, but not be blown over or blown down. Same thing with like, you know, coverings and stuff to protect them. Same thing with this tarp behind me, you know, kind of setting it up. Or like this plastic sheet that I kind of pull out and cover these little beaners, you know. <laughs> these little beaners grow like crazy. <laughs> Man, they just, you know. But the point is, life is doing that to you in these latter days. You were born in this generation that sees the accomplishment of what Jesus said was going to happen. The Jews would come back into the land. The nation would become a nation again. Jerusalem would become the undivided capital of Israel. And because it did, Jesus said, be prepared. That's the beginning of the end times. It's not the end of end times, and it's not the end of the world, but it's the beginning of trials and tribulation, things that you're supposed to be aware of. You know, most people know that, yeah, you know, as a Christian, you shouldn't be living your life like a sinner. But yeah, you know, come on, be real. You and I, you know, we're talking here turkey, you know, nobody's listening. Much. <laughs> but I know, if you're like me, you know, there's some little things you do that you kind of go, yeah, you know, maybe I shouldn't do that. But, you know, you kind of go, but this time. So you do it until you get tired of, you know, like getting punished for it or, you know, kind of like seeing it not turn out and then you kind of go, phooey, you know, those things just seem to mess me up, so I'm going to quit doing them. But, you know, there's some things that you do that, you know, you, you can get away with with grace, you know, to a certain degree. doesn't mean that you can get away with sin because, you know, we reap what we sow, but sometimes, you know, <laughs> you, you just don't go there, you know, you just go, ah, yeah, you know, it's not so bad, it's such a deal, I'm not going to worry too much about it. But what if today was the day? <gasps> Ooh, okay, I'm not going to do that no more. You know, we all clean up our act when we know. And we all know that we should have cleaned up our act before. And the scriptures tell us that when we see these things begin to happen, you know, kind of like, oh my gosh, my sunny day suddenly looks cloudy. It's getting foggy out there. And it's not so bright. So when you see these things begin to happen, you kind of go, wait a minute now. I think fog, sunny, you know, I think I read that somewhere. You know, when, when the times are changing, you know, when you, you look up and you see the weather changing, you know, and you see things happening, you know, like the Word of God says, and you go, now, I'm not exactly the brightest kid on the block, but I'm not stupid either. So 
when you sit down and get prepared, it's because you sat down and you took a look in there, you know, here, there, you know, so you can go there, you know, to figure out what really is going on, because everybody's got an opinion, you know, and you need to have one too, you know, because believe me, everybody else is going to tell you their opinion. I'll tell you mine if you really want to hear, but unless you ask me, hey, you know, you just have to figure it out on your own, because no matter what my opinion is, it's not going to do you any good, like I said. You walk out that door, you get in your car, and you drive down the street, and you're more likely to get killed in a car accident than you are to be raptured, to make it to the end of, you know, the time that we have left in these latter days. Um, you're more likely to get shot if you're in some high crime neighborhood or to get robbed and killed at some, you know, point in time. Or just maybe die of a heart attack, you know. Most people just kind of like never expect that. <gasps> drop, drop dead, you know. The old timers used to say, hey, when it's your time to go, it's your time to go. You go. <laughs> Well, that's bottom line, the truth. That's why we're supposed to be ready at any time. And that's why we kind of like, you know, really shouldn't be taken for granted the amount of time we do have left. And that's the same thing that's true about getting ready for the weather, preparing for the end of the world, making sure that you have your ducks in order or you have your raincoat ready or your umbrella in the car or that you have your house in order because should you die today, you know, let's just say you did, and you're married or you have kids or whatever, and, you know, you didn't write a will. Well, you know, you kind of get some of that taken care of because most of the times the states want their money, so they're going to get involved. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, your kids want to get some of their money, you know, out of what you got left, if you got anything, because I don't have anything. I just assume, you know, you dump me in a dumpster, you know, and then you want to inherit something, hey, go find the dumpster. <laughs> but some people have stuff, you know, and if they don't prepare for it, their stuff gets decided by other people. But if they prepare for it, they make a will, you know, and they distribute it. Well, Jesus said that you're going to one day stand before me. I'm going to ask you some questions, you know. It ain't going to be 20 questions. It ain't going to be 10. But I'm going to, you know, like have to deal with you on a personal level, face-to-face, mano y mano. And I'm going to say, did you do what I said to do? Well, Lord, what'd you tell me to do? Well, you remember that guy that was hungry and thirsty? Well, that was you, Lord? Well, hey, you see that book? No, Lord, I see a scroll. I'm kidding. But in heaven, you understand the point. Whether God has a book there or a scroll or whatever he has, you know the word of God tells you and warns you to be ready. So your life should be prepared for the end of of your life, as well as your day-to-day -day living should be prepared for the end of your life because, quite frankly, the weather's changing. Just as we've stood here, I watched my son disappear completely and I thought it was going to be a beautiful sunny day, except the weatherman, he warned me this morning it was going to get foggy. My golly, I hate it when they're right. Drats, like Charlie Brown used to say, foiled again. Well, bummer, dude. You know what? You don't get it together. You ain't going to get in or get out. You're going to get thrown out. And the bottom line is we all have to figure it out for ourselves. I'd love to tell you, you know, like it's a simple one, two, three, and go and see. You know, like, oh, well, you know, I can run forward and say, God, get me, you know, and you get saved. Well, all right. If that's what you believe in, hey, you know, I mean, I got the guy running around telling me that, you know, it's going to be, you know, hellfire and brimstone, you know, come any day now. Okay, <laughs> one way or another, you know, we're going to see something happen, and I'm pretty sure I know what, but if that's what he needs to motivate him, I'm going to let him go ahead and be motivated. But for you, you might have something different, you know? God might not be telling you you have 20 or 30 years left. He might be telling you something different because you might just die of quote unquote natural causes, meaning that you just go through your normal life and your life ended for whatever reason. That's also a form of it being the end of the world for you because once you die, everything changes. You step into heaven, so to speak, and suddenly your reality is you didn't die, but you exist beyond this physical life. 
And there's nothing you can do about what you did here anymore. And that's why we all prepare ourselves, really, to be ready, not just to prep it, you know, like a prepper for you know, the end of the world and trying to store up water or some food crazy ideas, you know. Quite frankly, God can take care of that one for me. You know, maybe not you, but for me, I'm not worried about it. I got tomatoes. <laughs> but, you know, maybe for you, you know, you kind of need to do that to feel reassured. And God's not wrong, you know, and beating you up about that or saying, don't do it. But whatever it is that the Lord tells you to do, that you should do. It kind of boils down to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 that I'm always telling people when I record a video that they should do. Hey, look, you know, you don't have to listen and you don't have to hear and you don't have to follow this or whatever. But you do need to think about these things and to consider when you talk to God what you're going to say when you die because you will talk to God. There's no doubt about that. It is no like kind of like mystical, magical, you know, the end of it all existence when you shoot yourself in the head or you, you know, happen to die normally or some other way. You know, it's not like suddenly you appear in the lake of fire with all your buddies and you go, hey, man, party down, dude, we got it. Hey, everything's cooking. <laughs> nah. But, you know, if you, you know, want to postpone that, take Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 to heart. Think about this. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Okay. My heart's kind of deceitful, wickedly made, so you know I, I don't want to trust in it, but I can trust in the Lord for it. See that? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Oh, and you know how your heart gets deceived. Man, next time some blonde walks by, tell me how quickly your heart gets deceived. Or if you're a woman, hey, check out that guy. Or check out those shoes. Whoa, man, DSW, here we come. But the point is, your heart is easily deceived. But if you trust in the Lord, He takes care of your heart. And you don't lean in your own understanding. You don't try to figure it all out. You try to talk it out with God. Because it says, in all your ways acknowledge Him and He'll direct your path. He will lead you. He will direct you. He'll give you the way to understand for you better than any man can if you'll sit down and talk to Him. If you'll take the time to examine the signs of the times that you're living in. If you'll look at the Word of God, that maybe you've been kind of like shining on and getting away with it for quite a while, like, dude, and I, you know, I've been doing fine, I'm okay. Well, yeah, maybe you are. <laughs> Until you get there, you know, I don't know what you'll be okay with, but quite frankly, I'm a little nervous about what I'm okay with, and I study this thing every day. <laughs> Matter of fact, I read it every day. Because I kind of worry about what the signs are of the times. And as I watch the fog roll in, I know how confusing it can be. Because you see, fog is kind of a funny thing. Fog is a cloud of vapor. I know a lot of people that are like that. They're clouds of vapor, but they don't rain. And Jesus warned about there being clouds that don't produce rain. Because they're really not that profitable for anything. They just come and go. They're vapors. They're wisps. But the interesting thing about fog is that it confuses the light. It diffuses it in different ways. You don't know where it's coming from or where it's going, but you don't know, quite frankly, whether it's, you know, like, what's going on. And most ship people that have been out in the ocean, they know that when the fog comes in, you drop anchor because you could run into something. When you're in a fog and you don't know what to do, that's probably what you should do. Stop. Just stop. Don't do anything. I'm straight up, hey God, you know, you talk to God, see if He agrees. Stop and then listen. You see, in the old days they used to have what's called a fog horn, fog horn, fog horn, fog horn. The farther away the sound, the farther away from dangerous rocks you were. But as the sound got louder, fog horn, fog horn, fog horn. Kind of like the beep, 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 you know, like on radar screens, you know, when you get closer or you've been doing those little, like, in those scanners, you know, when you're looking for metal, gold, money, <laughs> you know, your wallet. <laughs> well, they don't make one for that. But when you're looking around with those scanners, you know, you hear this beep, 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 You know, the closer you get to it, the louder the sound. You know, the more frequent the warning. You getting the picture yet? The more you hear, the more you're going to hear people warning you. 
There's a lot more warnings going out nowadays, so I begin to pay attention. The more you hear, if you don't know, then you may want to pay attention to those warnings, because could be some dangerous rocks out there, some shoals, and it's getting foggier rather than clearer when it comes to the end times. But there are a whole lot more people telling you that the end is near than there are that are telling you it's a sunny day. <laughs> so you study. You figure it out. You know, maybe maybe you have some chores to do today, like me. You know, I need to take care of these tomato plants, so I'm sorry, I gotta go. But, you know, I gotta get ready for the wind, because it's gonna whip through here. And believe me, it's gonna be blowing up a storm. Kind of like what's going to happen very soon in your life and mine. Because I don't know whether you paid attention to the weatherman, but Jesus is coming, and he's coming soon.